All the world's jewels will be mine. Sonic Adventure 2 Battle is a game I always come back to, from the high-speed races, to the treasure hunts, to the shoot-em-ups. It was a hodgepodge of interesting things that I played over and over again with my brothers. But the thing is, I was always bummed that certain characters could only play specific types of levels. I wanted to have free reign at any stage, but I couldn't with the tools I had. But the concept has stuck with me all the way to today, where now the tools are available to give it a whirl. So what would happen if Rouge the Bat try to tackle the entire hero story by herself. Every Sonic level, Knuckles stage, and all the world's tales had to go through. Could she clear the stages? Could she beat all the bosses? Well, in this video, we're going to do just that. So buckle up because there's a lot to cover. Is it possible to beat Sonic Adventure 2's hero story while only playing as Rouge the Bat? That's quite the loaded question, because with this challenge, we take a lot for granted. Given how we expect the game to work, Rouge obviously has abilities that mirror Knuckles. She can glide, melee while running, climb walls, dive, and dig into a variety of surfaces. And that's actually where our troubles begin. The first thing we have to consider is not all of Rouge's abilities will work in this challenge. Not that it's entirely needed, but digging at levels that aren't treasure hunting levels is impossible. So healing on a whim won't be a consideration if we need it. Rouge's flying ability will work, but we have to keep in mind that the camera doesn't know how to behave while we're gliding in abnormal levels. Certain doors, switches, and abilities that other characters would use to proceed through levels don't have behaviors set for treasure hunting characters like Rouge. For example, Rouge can't actually break obstacles that Tails or Eggman could with their weapons. About the only way she can smash through things is by tossing an Omochao at them, Assuming one is nearby, there are tons of small things that are going to become major obstacles. So what you're about to experience is a lot of unconventional ways of clearing levels, because the game is trying to stop us from doing so. With every level, Rouge will be loaded in on top of the existing character before the stage begins. Although it would be funny to do all the levels in just Rouge's outfit, it wouldn't change much. It certainly looks spiffy on everyone though. I mean, just look at that. All of this is possible given mods produced by main memory whom has contributed a ton to the Sonic hacking community. Some of you may recognize that this character replacing functionality was also available through Action Replay, although the results weren't as stable. Given this character change, some levels will be easy to clear, and others will be very difficult. But without further ado... Let's dive right into the first stage of this challenge, City Escape. Now, City Escape generally is a pretty easy stage, as the majority of it is just safe downhill racing. Since Rouge can't spawn on the board, she defaultly just falls down from the start. Once we take off running, it's quite funny to see her ripping through cars and setting them flying though. Majority of the level is pretty simple, but I do want to mention something in particular. Climbing the walls in this level is incredibly important for being able to complete it, and oftentimes the walls that will be climbed will be glitchy and invisible. This is because we're simply climbing the bounding box for the stage itself. Now, one would think that given that Cityscape has very few hazards, it's a pretty straight shot to the end. And you would be correct, except for one part. At the very end of the level is an area that the player needs to roll through to initiate the final scene with a giant truck. However, because we're not a speed-based character, we don't have the roll function. So passing through this area normally doesn't work. Once we realize this, we of course try to climb the wall to simply jump over this obstacle. But we run into another issue. There is an invisible ceiling above us that we cannot pass through and this is actually what makes this level kind of a pain to complete. So the thing is, every part of City Escape, except for the two street racing parts in the first half of the level, have invisible ceilings. This means that regardless of where you try to break out of bounds, you'll find an invisible ceiling or wall keeping you in the level. Even during the giant descent after the loop we run through, this entire area is walled off. So what we need to do is backtrack all the way from the end of the level, climb the giant wall, which takes forever by the way, and make our way back to the second section with the city streets. This is the only area besides the beginning that doesn't have a ceiling. So this is where the fun begins. So the strategy is this, you need to climb out of bounds at this point, and use Rouge's gliding ability to keep you out of bounds for the entire level until the truck. This is super annoying because the camera doesn't cooperate, and you can't actually rotate it at all when you're flying in this area. Without the ability to see below you, you have to be careful not to lose sight of the level, or accidentally enter back into the level. If you accidentally entered the level, you'd have to backtrack to the start again. To make this worse, the calling in the game is going to erase your reference points as you glide down, 
meaning the level will be disappearing and seemingly spawning at random in front of you, which can certainly induce panic. If you lose sight of the level, it's of course game over, because you won't find it again. If you play your cards right and fly a safe distance from the stage, you will eventually come to the truck area and can re-enter the level's geometry. Talk about a ton of work for one simple barrier skip. Jeez. Anyways, now we just have to outrun the truck and grab the goal ring and we can complete the stage. This marks off Cityscape as beatable, and we can continue our run. Just as a quick fun tidbit, if you actually backtrack to the crashed truck, you can climb over the wall it's smashed against and check out the full truck. Since this is a street racing area, that means the area lacks a ceiling so we can do so. Just thought I'd share that. Once City Escape is clear, we immediately face off against F6T Bigfoot. While playing as Rouge, this boss is a little annoying to hit since you don't have a homing attack. Because of the recoil the homing attack normally has, when we attempt to hit this boss with Rouge, we often take damage at the same time. The third kick in Rouge's melee combo works pretty well against him. And as long as we collect rings upon exchanging blows, he should go down pretty easily. Next up we have Wild Canyon. Wild Canyon and pretty much all Knuckles levels are clearable. Because of this, I won't be really touching on them at all, as it's a bit pointless in terms of the challenge. However, our next boss fight is normally supposed to be Tails vs Eggman. But because Eggman can't be out when Rouge is, he gets swapped with a clueless Knuckles. I mean, this Knuckles won't even attack, he just runs around. A few swift hits and he goes down pretty easily. Okay, Prison Lane. This level is absolutely brutal, and let me tell you why. In order to advance in this stage, you typically have to kill all the enemies in the area to open up the gates that block your path. While that may sound easy, it's definitely not. Reason being is a lot of enemies spawn behind gates that you're normally able to shoot through. But without a projectile attack, we can't target these enemies to defeat them. So the gate stays shut. Even trying to throw an object like Omachao through this door does nothing. And this is why this level sucks really, really bad. Because the first room you're in literally has no way out of it. It has walls on all sides and a ceiling. And again, the enemy we need to defeat is behind the gate. So we have to get creative. At first I try clipping through the door, because I noticed that dropping Omochao against one of its corners can sometimes push him out of bounds. But unfortunately, it doesn't work for the player. I then tried pinning myself against the canisters in the room in hopes it would glitch me through the wall. This looked promising, but it didn't work. However, after an hour of experimenting, I realized I could climb behind the boxes on the right side of the room. Normally, you have to break them to get by, but by positioning Rouge on the wall above the crate, we can actually climb behind them despite there being no space to do so. Once we get off the wall, the game doesn't know what to do with us, so it shakes all over the place. If we're on the back side of the crate, we'll actually clip through the wall and begin falling. Now, the important thing to remember is that we cannot gain any height with our glide, so we pretty much have to activate our glide ability the second we clip through the wall. Clipping is random though, so timing this is super difficult. With the glide initiated, we can fly to the next room, but we hit the death barrier 99% of the time. Only if we manage to start flying the second we glitch out of bounds, can we coast to this angled wall in the following room and grab onto it. Unfortunately though, we're right against the death barrier for the game. And to make things worse, we can't climb beyond this curve. There's a piece of geometry that's facing outwards that looks promising, but everything is out of our reach. So for the time being, we're going to be moving forward with hypotheticals, and we'll revisit this level once again later on. So let's assume a way is discovered to get up top in this room. Something to note about Prison Lane is that all the giant walls surrounding the area actually cannot be climbed. This is strange because almost every type of container wall in the game can be, but for some reason these cannot. If they could, we could technically climb to the top of the walls in the areas, jump over them, and glide out of bounds for quite a while. But this isn't a possibility. In this first giant room, we can actually skip all the follow-up gates because we can simply climb on top of them to avoid clearing them the normal way. We can make our way through this area pretty easily, but we then come across another issue. A second gate that won't open without destroying the enemies inside. So what's frustrating about this part is there's pretty much a super slim chance we can get past this. Basically, what you need to do is move Rouge behind the canisters to the left of the door, and pray they'll push her through the opposite wall and not just through the floor. If this is possible, you could probably continue on by flying to the next rooms and then landing in the elevator room. Keep note of this possibility for later, because we'll talk about it again. But then we come across something awful. The third gate. At the top of the elevator in this room, we come across a gate that once again won't open. The room has a ceiling and we can't clip out of bounds via the elevator no matter what we do. So we once again turn our attention to the canisters stacked alongside the door. 
By jumping into them, the game freaks out again because it is pushing Rouge's position all over the place. But no matter what we do, Rouge will never clip through the wall. At best, she'll clip to the front of the canisters. And I think this is because the canisters aren't close enough to the wall to give us the pushing power we need. Even if you could get past this door, there's two more immediately after it. Clipping through the second door using the box glitch we utilize at the start of the level doesn't work. It's not a tight enough fit for Rouge to be pushed out of bounds. And even if we were to check out the remainder of the level just for kicks, there's two to three more situations like this that stop us in our tracks. But let's put this level on the back burner until the end of the video, where we can take another look at it. Launching at the Metal Harbor, the level seems decently simple. Given how far Rouge can glide, you can utilize a lot of your momentum from the launch pads to coast across the big gaps in the level. If for some reason you lack enough altitude, you can always latch onto a wall and climb on up to recover. Generally speaking, this level is easy, until we get to the end, where things become pretty difficult. So in a normal playthrough, you're supposed to launch over to the rocket that is taking off via a small rocket transport. You must then scale this rocket silo before the timer runs out. If you don't make it to the top, you die. But if you do make it to the top, you latch onto the rocket and launch into the sky. This normally places your character on a board at this point, as they fall back down to the level. You go through a small area, and then you grab the goal ring. And that would normally be the end of it. Except Rouge doesn't function that way. So if you reach the end of the level as Rouge and grab onto the rocket, basically she'll be hovering beneath the handle when the scene change happens. It's pretty funny to look at, but then you realize you're stuck in an endless falling animation that never ends. The only thing you can do is pause and exit the game at this point. This happens because Rouge cannot be loaded onto a board, so the game hangs up in this event. So how do we fix this? Well, at first, I thought there was no way I could complete the level. If I had any shot of doing so, I'd have to figure out where this ending section was on the entire map. The problem with this is that the map removes things in the distance because of the draw distance established by the game. This means that looking around to see this ending section didn't work. It wasn't until I started flying out to no man's land and dying repeatedly did I notice where the geometry was for the stage clear zone. And it was way past the rocket area. Inaccessible since flying over to it would kill you. Even if you try to climb to the top of the rocket area to fly over. Once the timer starts, regardless of where you are, you will die once it reaches zero. So this puts us in a dilemma. At this point I tried experimenting. And I realized that entering the rocket area at all started the timer, meaning that this was a no-fly zone. So I began to brainstorm. I hypothesized that there was a bounding box around this rocket launch area that, when entered, started the countdown. But I began wondering what the height limit was on the box. Hypothetically, if I could get over it, I could possibly get to the top of this area without a timer. So I backtracked a bit and found a nearby tower I jumped from earlier and climbed to the top. This tower allowed me to fly over to the rocket area and land on a wall, which allowed me to dodge the start of the timer. Using this, I navigated around the top and saw the area I needed to go to. The goal area was close enough that the game loaded it in, so I tried jumping and flying to it. But unfortunately, it was pretty difficult because my camera was constantly rotating and trying to correct itself to face the rocket area I jumped from. This basically made the jump completely blind and you had to move your control stick in the opposite direction the camera was moving to preserve your distance. I ended up making it to the place I needed to go, but it wasn't high enough and died. Since the rocket in this area is a movable object, it can't be climbed, so I need to find something with more height. That's when I realized that the jump spring used to launch Sonic onto the rocket didn't start the launch animation, since the timer never loaded. I used the spring at the top of the launch pad to propel me into the air, and with some careful camera adjustments and some blind luck, I made it to the tunnel area across the giant gap. This allowed me to finish the stage and mark Metal Harbor off as a win. I will say that I did do this without the use of what speedrunners call glide extending, which is something I'll cover a bit later in the video. Similar to Eggman vs Tails, when we face off against Shadow in the forest, he's replaced with Knuckles. Except this time, he forgot how to move? Rouge pretty much mercy kills this confused NPC, and we proceed on to our next Sonic level. Diving into Green Forest, things seem pretty straightforward as we move through the stage. Rouge can be a bit hard to control while moving at high speeds though, and for some reason tends to get stuck on certain geometry when running through the area. However, the main obstacle for the stage is something a bit bizarre, the vines. 
When you normally go through this level, lots of jump springs kick you into the air in which your character grabs a vine to swing around to the next area. The problem is, Rouge is never supposed to be at levels that have vines, so she doesn't have an animation for letting go of one. Anytime you come across a swinging vine, it's game over if you grab it. Rouge will lock up and plays floating in the air, and the only thing you can do is pause and quit. It's important to note that this only applies to swinging vines, as the bungee jump vine doesn't do this, but this presents a unique challenge to this level. Can it be completed without vines? Well, we're in luck because a lot of the big trees in the area count as climbable walls. Not every tree can be climbed, but a lot of them can. This means with enough height, we can typically glide over to the next area. The first couple vines in this level are pretty easy to avoid, but once we get into the second half, things get a bit more tricky. Anytime there's a large swinging animation, we need to figure out where the vine launches us after it moves us. Now this can be tricky because we don't have a first person view to work with. And beyond that, the game calls out areas in the distance to save on processing power. So in order to figure out where the vines go, we basically need to fly onto no man's land and see if we can spawn the land. The good thing is, usually there's enough height before these areas so we can glide safely to the next destination. Repeat this twice and you can reach the end of the level. However, you'll need enough height to bypass the entire ending of the level, because it starts collapsing and it's a pain to try to get this fast with Rouge. But if we conserve enough height, we can finish the stage by snagging the goal rank. Pumpkin Hill is another one of those stages which can be cleared normally without any issues, so we're going to skip it for the sake of the video and hop over to the next tail stage. Let's swing on over to Mission Street now. This level in particular isn't too difficult, as generally Rouge's gliding and climbing abilities make navigating the level pretty spot on to how Tails would tackle it. One thing to note is that Rouge cannot actually destroy any objects that Tails would normally be able to destroy. This includes barricades and bomb packs that are scattered throughout the stage. The only way to destroy them would be to throw an Omochao at them, but it isn't really worth the trouble. One thing that's interesting about this level is that the planes that normally zoom on by dropping bombs are glitched out when you're playing as Rouge. At the part where you need to climb up a series of floating platforms, a plane's flying noises are on loop while the plane just sort of drifts slowly through the air. It's kinda silly, and if you touch it, the plane will just randomly explode. Honestly though, the only real hazard at this level is getting hit and falling off the road before you can recover. Gliding at that point is futile, since you can't climb the highway pillars below the road as they generally lack collision. Other than this, the level is pretty straightforward and you can reach the end pretty quickly. Aquatic Mine is of course beatable by Rouge, and since Rouge has a car of her own, we can finish Route 101 without issues either. As soon as this is done, we head into our next Tails area. Up next, we have Hidden Base, and this one is incredibly aggravating. So the problem with Hidden Base is that the camera is locked almost the entire time, because we're navigating through tight corridors. The camera often gets hung up on the geometry while trying to follow Rouge. This leads to plenty of instant camera readjustments that cause death, and they're pretty much out of your control. Tackling this level though, there's a few things we need to address. First and foremost, any destructible object like doors cannot be broken by any attacks with Rouge. This means that if there was a door we need a break to progress, we had to think of a way around it. It is possible to break a door with Rouge, but in order to do so, you actually have to throw Omochao into it several times. It's incredibly annoying because the game won't actually let you throw him at the door. For some reason, it tries to aim away from the door, so you pretty much have to be right up on it. However, even with this technique, we run into some problems. Any destructible bombs in this area can't be destroyed by Rouge, meaning we can't collapse any platforms. So that means we can't carry Omochao through the level with us to smash the doors we come across. So in order to progress through this level, we actually need to clip through some areas above the doors because they lack collision in certain spots. However, while this grants us passage into the next area, it usually locks our camera behind the wall. This is because the camera tries to follow us, but it can't pass through the wall. If we were Tails, this door would be broken, so the camera wouldn't have any issues doing so. This makes entering new areas in this level a gamble, because trying to rotate the camera yourself usually doesn't free it. This can cause you to wander off an edge and die while your camera is locked up, so you typically have to jump towards a wall and climb up in hopes to get around. There's also a few areas in this level where the door clip won't save you either, because sometimes it puts you in a room that has a ceiling and can only be exited by doors. With no Omo Child, you're pretty much screwed. However, initial obstacles aside, majority of the time you'll find yourself having to climb the red hieroglyphic walls in this level to get enough height to fly past areas you would normally need to shoot down. 
Solid structures with this pattern can almost always be climbed, and the only time they cannot be is when they're on a collapsing platform. And that's the general formula for this stage. Climb red walls, clip through the top of doors, and then pray your camera becomes usable again. Oh, and also hope you don't get blown up by the bomb throwing monkeys while you're in camera limbo. The hardest part of the level is actually the last room you come across before the goalpost, because not all the walls in this area can be climbed, and because there is tons of invisible ceilings for Rouge, you have to take the pulley system to the top areas, and then navigate while your camera is flipping around and getting stuck. It's super annoying because every time you actually jump for a pulley, the camera actually rotates 180 degrees instantly, and you reverse your jump before you can react. And to top things off, the large platform you're supposed to knock down so you can get on top of it is off limits, and blocks a large part of the upper area. The bomb throwing monkeys actually spawn inside the level geometry because of this, so bombs will randomly fall through walls and the ceiling to hit you. If you can somehow make it up here and hit the jump spring, you'll be sent high enough that you can coast over the wall and clear the stage. Going into this level, I certainly had some worries about the map itself. Inside Pyramid Cave, majority of the passageways are gatekeeped by timed switches. If you can't make it through in time, you have to repeat the section by hitting the switch again. Generally, I wasn't too worried about switches out in the open, but I did have some fears that the long, winding tunnel switches would pose some problems. If the switches are out in a giant room, Rouge can typically just climb the structure the sealed door is on, and avoid the door altogether. However, if it is a sealed tunnel with a ceiling, that means we have to play by the rules and complete it as intended. For majority of the level, things were fine. By far, the part that worried me the most, though, was the long tunnel with the ghosts. In a normal playthrough, Sonic would just spin dash through this area, hitting the speed pads to boost his momentum. Being in the spin dash makes him smaller, thus he can squeeze under the door just in time at the end. With Rouge, though, I was afraid that her speed would be less than Sonic's. And on top of that, there was no way to reduce her height. Going into this, I expected the worst. But coming out of it, I was super surprised. I made it through on the first try without any issues, and it was almost as if Rouge could run much faster than Sonic, since she isn't designed to be in a level like this where speed needs to shift. I could be wrong about it, but I felt she was moving incredibly fast. Once this hurdle is cleared though, it's smooth sailing. We make our way through the rest of Pyramid Cave without any issues, and finish the stage. Death Chamber is clearable without issues because it's a Knuckles stage. Not much to cover there. And King Boom Boo is pretty much the same since it's a Knuckles boss fight. Flip the hourglass four times, dig up the big ghost, and then kick him to seal the victory. Our next boss fight is the golem within the pyramid. Surprisingly, this fight is pretty difficult since Rouge's vertical jump is slower and you can't recover as fast as Sonic's can. Basically, you need maximum height jumps to make it up majority of the steps at the start, and if you slip off, it's instant death. For some reason, there is no floor here when Rouge is loaded in, so if you fall, you fall indefinitely and have to restart the match manually. A few well-placed hits though, and the golem will go down, securing Rouge another victory. And now, we head up into space. Eternal Engine is a level that you can blaze through pretty quickly with Rouge. I should know because I died here countless times trying to complete the stage. Since Rouge has the ability to climb walls and glide, you can cover ground pretty fast, oftentimes having the doors slow you down. When starting the stage, the doors had me worried, since I felt I'd come across one I wouldn't be able to open. But since you don't need to open any airlocks, which Rouge can't, you can still progress. However, the first time I made it to that engine room after falling down that huge tunnel, I realized this isn't going to be so easy. The stage itself may have been simple to navigate, but Rouge's feet lock into place on the platform, and then you can't do anything but wait for death. Without a way to open the engine up, this way won't work. So I began thinking about how I would clip out of bounds. I did find a way near the final room, involving sliding Rouge between the wall and the generator, but it didn't give me enough time to react before hitting the death barrier. At this point, I was pretty frustrated, and I turned to YouTube. A speedrunner on YouTube called Russian Blue highlighted a way that Tails could skip the final part, and it was based on the mechanics I was already trying to utilize. My only issue was I needed to backtrack and use a different generator. Once I did this, it took me about 20 tries to make it to the actual goal ring. You have to glide out of bounds and re-enter the room at the bottom of the tunnel. But even if you do, you have to be careful not to grab a wall or miss your target. Doing this with Tails is pretty easy because you can hover in place. If you bump into a wall, it's game over, because it will mess everything up and sort of trap you. If you line up perfectly though, you can cut through the wall and straight into the goal ring clearing this super frustrating stage. 
So Meteor Herd is pretty much the same as is the fight between Rouge and Knuckles, but the stage after that? Woof. Let's just jump straight into Crazy Gadget now, which is a pretty long course and by far the most difficult level, besides Prison Lane, that I've encountered. Holy crap, this one is brutal. Right away we are faced with a series of roadblocks. First and foremost, Rouge cannot change gravity at all. Nothing happens upon hitting the switch, so for the most part we have to navigate this level with the basic universal gravity. But we come across another annoying obstacle. We cannot access the tubes that link this level together because Rouge is incapable of breaking open the doors to get inside. Even if we toss an elbow child at it, we get nothing. Which means we're going to have to traverse this level the hard way. And by hard, I mean blindly flying through space. So here's the thing. At the start of the level, we are capable of climbing the walls next to us and jumping out of bounds. This throws us into free flight, where we can coast through space while constantly losing altitude. Now the level of course is constantly loading and unloading, and it's impossible to see where you're going. But we want to go straight left for a minute, and by left I mean left of the first door we encounter. If we clip into bounds at any part during this process, we'd get stuck at more door areas we cannot get past. So we need to fly the entire duration of the level, which I attempted many, many times. Over 30 to be exact. And unfortunately we're stuck in a near impossible situation. We lose too much height during this flying process, and making it to the end puzzle room seems almost impossible. I was about to throw in the towel, but that's when I once again turned to the Sonic speedrunning community and learned about glide extending. In a video by Russian Blue, it's explained that the longer you glide in this game, the slower you travel and the more you begin to fall. However, if we interrupt this action by say canceling our glide, diving, and then reinitiating flight, we can gain the important momentum the start of a flight has in terms of traveling horizontal distance. So with this maneuver, we can glide a lot farther into space than we could before, but it comes at a price, because it absolutely kills your hand doing this over and over for almost a minute straight per life. The issue is once we get farther into space, we still have to experiment life per life to carve out a path. And this is where I ran into trouble. The final section of the level with multiple gravity directions is basically a giant cube with death barriers on all sides. Meaning we can't fly in on any of the sides without dying. So entering behind the gold ring won't work because it kills our player. So at this point I began trying to make it within the tunnels near the end of the level. But each one still left me with a hiccup. Either I come across a crawl space that Sonic was supposed to roll through, a line of rings that Sonic was supposed to travel through, or a lift that Rouge could not utilize. Reaching the exact tunnel that led to the ending area seemed impossible too, as none of these areas spawn until you're well past them. So basically this leaves you measuring your flying time by the in-game clock, and hoping you're not going to touch something invisible that will kill you, and you kill yourself over and over again, filling out the boundaries of the stage. And it's not like we can use save states either, so you have to repeat the run each and every time. After countless hours of experimenting, I determined what the optimal route was. It turns out the saving grace to all of this is actually the metal side of the final cube area. This is the one wall that doesn't have a death barrier, and can be passed through if you're moving from the outside coming in. So the optimal route I was talking about. Technically there are two. One involves completely being blind the entire time, and the other, which isn't as optimal in terms of distance traveled, actually requires us to basically coast parallel to a death barrier and a room that would trap us if we entered it. I cannot say it enough. This was absolutely horrible to route out, because it's like you're trying to take down the Death Star, but you're blind and you can't see the spot you're supposed to shoot. So you have to perfectly glide between the level interior and the death barrier making sure you don't touch either. While counting the number of rooms you pass so you know when to turn, and then turn immediately when the death barrier stops to do a 180, and try to catch the bottom of the green rectangular geometry in the final areas. After well over 100 attempts and over 5 hours of playing, I did it. I made it through to the final room. Although we can't use the gravity switches in this area, we don't need to because Rouge can scale the walls and make her way over to the switch needed to open the goal ring. With the switch pressed, we can finish one of the most insane level attempts of this run, and move onwards to the hardest boss fight we have in the game. So the thing is, the fight between Tails and Eggman is pretty straightforward if you're a max, but the added HP buff that Knuckles receives makes this match entirely one-sided. Since this is normally a mech match, that also means there aren't any rings on the stage, so you start the level with zero rings and no way to get any. To make things worse, Knuckles' stun period after getting hit is almost non-existent, 
and he'll start his melee combo towards you as soon as he lands. This sometimes causes you to die randomly if you attack him at the wrong time. It's a pretty stressful match because he has around 10 more hits before he goes down, and if he just touches you once, you're dead. By far the worst part is that this fight can only be rechallenged again after clearing Crazy Gadget, so let that sink in. If we play our cards right though, we can defeat him, and move on to the final stage in our run. Final Rush, the last stage on our challenge run, and one I've been pretty interested in since the beginning. Since the entire level is mostly downward, it makes gliding in place of grinding pretty easy. Mind you, the camera is going to haunt you this entire level, but slow and steady wins the race. My first time through the level, I tried to stay up way above the grind rails for safety reasons, but I ended up dying. So on my second pass, I found that staying closest to the rails as possible will make it so your camera won't try to kill you as much. What's interesting is that a lot of the large structures in this area can actually be climbed. So during parts where you need upwards grinding momentum to push you to the next area, you can often find a wall of the space station arc that you can scale to get to where you need to go. All in all, it wasn't really a bad stage really once I got the hang of it. It's certainly beatable and nowhere near as absurd as Crazy Gadget was. So the final fight of the hero story is pretty interesting. Because instead of fighting Shadow, you face off against a blue Knuckles. It's pretty funny, but the fight itself is decently annoying. Without a homing attack, it's hard to approach Knuckles at all. So you pretty much have to stop running, let him damage you once or twice, and then before it starts running again, get a hit in. It is pretty funny though watching Knuckles trying to use the homing attack, since his character performs the same inputs, but with treasure hunting characters it only makes you glide for a second. It's a good opportunity to hit him if he gets stuck doing it. After a few hits, he'll go down, and you'll clear the last fight of the hero's arc. So where does this put us? Well, we've come quite a long way, and have managed to clear every single level in the game except one. Many of these levels were completed through bizarre means, but they were completed nonetheless. Without certain abilities, we had to work around a lot, but there's still one thorn in all of this. Prison Lane is the only stage so far we cannot clear, so I want to take another moment to recap my thoughts on it. Since almost every passage in the level involves you having to glitch through a wall in order to proceed, there's not a lot that can be done without some way to gain height. Like I mentioned earlier, Prison Lane's massive outer walls for some reason don't classify as actual walls, and so we can't actually climb them. This is the only thing in the level that presents a good amount of height, or at least initially. Currently we're stuck hanging on the wall below, in the first main room, after the first gate. However, I did want to add some insight in terms of progress. If the second door can be successfully skipped, and we can fly to the elevator room and grab the wall, I did figure out another way to clip through this area. And it also means I lied earlier about the elevator. We can use it. What I realized is that if you climb under the elevator, you typically pop through the top of it if you jump. But if you grab the small adjacent walls at the top of the lift from within the elevator, you can release yourself and clip through the wall. Mind you, I don't know if you can live past this point, but hypothetically with perfect timing, you might be able to reach the climbable barrier in the other room ahead, skipping the tunnel with the doors. If we can make it up to the Mystic Melody area, we spawn a jump spring that shoots us super high in the air, possibly high enough to make it over the boundaries of the stage. With this, it might be possible to coast down through the level near the end, but I don't know. I also can't test this because in order to get past gate 2, I had to cheat with a moon jump, thus gliding wouldn't behave the same. So those are just theories. The issue with prison lane is that the level is constantly ascending while our flight is descending. It isn't like Crazy Gadget where the level naturally lowers over time, which lined up perfectly for the glide extending exploit. But what we have here is only pieces to a puzzle. I've exhausted all my options at this point. So currently Prison Lane is the one thing that makes finishing the hero side with Rouge impossible. One dang level. Talk about a drag. So although the results are mildly disappointing, did you enjoy the challenge? Have any ideas for Prison Lane? I had a lot of fun plotting the routes for this challenge, so I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for tuning in for this unconventional challenge video. Perhaps you'll like the challenge I did with Mario 64, or you can hear me outline why Shadow's shoes are totally absurd. I promise it's not a shoe review. Anyways, thanks for watching guys and gals, and until my next video, cheers.